NASA Glenn, this is Houston. NASA now has cleared for launch. Data systems are optimal. Video streaming is at go. Roger, Houston. Commencing countdown to new show launch in five, four, three, two. This is a program for you. It's a window into NASA labs, launches, research, and testing, and more. Each week, a new show will focus on a new topic and give you a new inside NASA experience. There'll be contests, games, guests, ways for you to connect and share your projects and ideas, and lots more. Hi, I'm Chris, and this is what's happening at NASA now. <laughs> NASA has achieved another first by placing a communication satellite called Artemis P-1 into a unique kidney-shaped orbit around a precise point in space where the gravities of the Sun, Earth, and Moon are in perfect balance. This type of orbit is called a libration orbit. The National Institutes of Health is taking advantage of the unique microgravity environment aboard the International Space Station to explore questions about important health issues like how bones and the immune systems are affected by space travel. More information on these stories can be found on the NASA Now homepage. That was NASA Now. Now, let's flash forward to the past. In July of 1971, the Apollo 15 mission was the first to employ a lunar rover, allowing the astronauts to travel much farther from their landing site and collect a wider variety of lunar samples. Before that mission, the astronauts traveled on foot by walking, hopping, jumping, and falling, and expending a great deal of effort and oxygen in the process. Now that we're back at the now, now let's see what's up, or going down, at the slope. Hi, I'm Steve Bauman, and this is the simulated lunar, oh wait. This is the simulated lunar operations facility here at the NASA Glenn Research Center in Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> I'm standing in what could be called a giant sandbox. This is no ordinary sand. The sand we have in here isn't just like any sand like at the beach. It's a special blend of three different kinds of sand. Behind me you'll see a hill that we've created in this big room. And this hill is really what it is, is like a dump truck bed. As a matter of fact, we had a dump truck manufacturer make this big steel bed for us and, and provide us with the hydraulic cylinders that are underneath it that allow us to lift it up to 45 degrees. The moon surface has a lot of very fine sand in it, moon dust as well as heavy sand. So we've blended different sands that we've been able to buy into what we think is a good lunar simulant. We're experimenting with all kinds of tires, and in particular in here, we're trying to figure out how good they are at traction for helping the vehicle climb hills or pull things. This is one of the early wheels we made, and it's very plain. You can see it's just like a big old round circle and there's nothing much to it. But that's what we wanted for research, so we could compare other wheels that have better traction ability and better construction to this plane wheel. And one of the tires that was developed back in the 60s was a lot like this. You can see how springy it is, and that's what this spiral provides. So the vehicle itself gets a lot of springiness from this tire, even though it's not a bouncy rubber tire like we're used to, it provides a lot of bounce to the vehicle. 
it was decided there was a better design than this for the actual Apollo rovers that actually went to the moon back in 1970, 71, and 72. There were three rovers actually put on the moon. They're still there. This is a very precise replica of those Apollo rover wheels. And you can see that it's bouncy and it's made out of, totally out of metal. And it actually has very good traction and load carrying capability too. But yet the wheel itself is very lightweight, which is important for anything we send into space. In the future, we're gonna have different size vehicles. We expect to have a lot larger, heavier vehicles. And so we need to be able to design and develop our own wheels. This is a prototype of a wheel that we've been developing. It's actually called a spring tire. And that's because it's made up of coil springs. We are looking at all kinds of these kinds of wheels for our research here in the Slope facility here at NASA Glenn Research Center. Did you know that in January of 2009, the newest version of a pressurized lunar rover appeared in the presidential inauguration parade? Now, from the moon to the Milky Way, let's see what's up. Take a look at this cool picture taken from the Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer. This is the Rosette Nebula in the constellation Monoceros, also called the Unicorn. So this is the Unicorn's Rose. You can take a look at this and other great pictures from the sky right from this website. We've shown you some cool stuff, now it's your turn. NASA is hosting two national science challenges for teams to develop and prepare weightless experiments. Winning teams will be able to test their projects at a microgravity drop tower at NASA Glenn Research Center. Get your entries in by November 1st. Something else you might like is the Earth Science Week Photography Contest. The deadline is October 15th. Check out these contests right here on the NASA Now homepage. That's it for NASA Now. Be sure to tune in next week when we take a look at flight testing. See you then on NASA Now.